What's up guys, welcome back to the Night Owl channel and welcome to the second episode of the Dynasty Warriors character analysis series. In this episode we'll be going over a female from the Jin Dynasty, a brand new character who was added in the latest installment of Dynasty Warriors and her name is Jin Jianying. Hope you guys enjoy it. A native of Longji County, Gansu, Jin Jiang Ying was an intelligent girl who spent most of her time studying at a young age. She married the affluent Yang Dan upon turning 16, and the Shiyu describes her as a stern and opinionated woman with a keen sense of awareness. Now, in the Dynasty Warriors 9 game, she is introduced to Cao Cao in the Wei Army and the Wei Forces um, through her father, Jin Pi. You have brought your daughter, Xin Jiang Ying, with you. Thank you for joining our cause in this battle. Because of you two, the turmoil in Ji province finally shows signs of settling down. Xin Xian Ying. She was the daughter of Shen Pi, who served under Yuan Shao and Yuan Tan. After the Yuan family was eradicated, she and her father went to serve Cao Cao and helped to participate in quelling the chaos in Ji province. Cao Cao then used the momentum from his victory over Yuan Shao to move his forces south. He advanced his army on Chibi, determined to defeat Sun Quan, who refused to surrender. This battle would serve to greatly alter the course of history. Xin Qian Ying and Xin Pi met up with Cao Cao's forces ready to take to the battlefield once more. Father, Master Cao Cao has come here to see you. Please try to look more cheerful. Jin Jiang Ying and Jin Pi join Cao Cao's forces at the Battle of Chi Bi. And after the battle, she says a few more things. Individuals indeed to have caught us unaware like this. However, we must remain Positive, by giving our all on the front lines, we can overcome this vicious blow we've been dealt. Jin Jiang Ying after that really doesn't have much else to say. She is involved in a lot of conversations, part of the group meetings, but she literally just stands in the back and says nothing. This is the chance we have been waiting for. We shall cross the Xiangjiang and slay Sun Quan and Liu Bei. Preparations for the upcoming battle are complete. We must take this time. So as you can see, Jin Jiang Ying taking part of all these, you know, group conversations and nothing to say. They go around and talk to everybody else and everybody else has something to say except for Jin Jiang Ying. And I'm not saying that I cut all her parts out to make it look like look like that. No, play if you play Dynasty Warriors 9, if you're a fan or you know, you think about picking it up after watching my videos or whatever, play through her story. I'm telling you, it is the most boring thing that it, it, it's it's probably, she's probably number 90. She's actually probably number 90. I haven't gone through all the characters yet, but as of right now, I did Cheng Pu a few days ago. Cheng Pu is definitely above her. Um, her story was just so empty. It was just so empty. And I feel like they just put her in the Battle of Chibi and all these other battles so the user can use her in battle, if that makes sense, you know, other than that, she, I mean, there was a few, there was one where there was a bunch of privates talking, privates, NPCs, these are like the lowest level ranking characters in the game, and then, and then there were a few peasants, I think, too, they were talking about Sao P becoming the emperor and how they didn't like it, and she's in the background watching. It seems that the Han Imperial Court is about to meet its end. Shh! You mustn't say things like that out loud. If one of the Cell family were to hear you. Did you hear the news? Lord Cao Pi is about to be named Emperor. Huh? What about the current Emperor? D don't tell me that they... I heard that Lord Cao Pi said the Emperor wishes to abdicate the throne voluntarily. That's ridiculous. Why would he just give up the throne like that? Lord Sao Pi must be applying pressure to him. So as you can see, I mean, they weren't privates, but two ministers, two non-playable characters, and peasants. 
Peasants are the lowest ranking NPCs, by the way. Peasants and ministers talking, and they couldn't, you know, get Jin Jin Ying to say, "Hey, Sao P, these people are talking about you. Maybe you should do something about it." You know, that's you know that's how Sao P's character is really is. I mean, if someone is threatening him, which was actually the next mission, you know, somebody's threatening his position or threatening way, he takes care of him. So, no, they didn't have any of that. She kind of just stands there watching them. <laughs> it's so. Weird. This is this is one group conversation where she's literally you can literally see her between the two shoulders of uh, two characters. I think it's Jaho Dune and somebody else. Look. For us to be optimistic given our current circumstances, where do we strike first? <laughs> so as you can see, Xin Zhen Ying is just standing there in the back, has no relevance to the conversation at all, and, and just really there's no need for her to be there. And I mean, there was another scene where Man Chong or somebody else was talking to Sao Sao and they were discussing strategy and she was just standing there. Just standing there. No input, no nothing. She was just standing there. It's just so weird going through her story and that's basically she's like that friend in the group that just kind of doesn't know what's going on but kind of like laughs along and kind of nods her head like she thinks everything's going on but she really has no idea. Do your friends ever have a conversation and you just nod along even though you're not really sure what they're talking about? So as you can see, Jin Jian Ying is just this totally irrelevant, just unnecessary character that is literally there taking up space. That's the best way I can put it because she literally doesn't have anything else to say until the end of her story. And this is where the Wei forces are like struggling or something and they like make her out to be this like beacon of hope. Like her cutscene, she literally comes in and they're like, oh, my lady, you're here. It, it, it's so crazy and then also what's also so crazy is that her father is still alive like i was watching the scene and i was like nah that can't be him maybe that's just because you know npcs in united states warriors they they repeat the, the model the frame there's a lot of people with the same look but with different names i was like okay so maybe that's somebody else you know i mean it looks exactly like the npc that her dad is but i mean it's just a coincidence there's no way he's still alive do it. Let's show them just what we can do. <laughs> now wait. <laughs> that is exactly what the enemy wants us to do. Oh. <sighs> That's exactly right, everyone. No matter what Shu does, we must remain calm and in control. Xian Ying, you. Oh, that is Xin Chan Ying. Our lady has finally come. It looks like the enemy. It's just taunting us at the moment. So let us relax and prepare ourselves. Oh, of course, yes, my lady. lady. <laughs> you continue to amaze me, young lady. You were able to calm the men so easily. <laughs> but I am very serious. But we must fight our best. If we are to have hope for tomorrow. So apparently she has some sort of impact on the troops to where she could literally just show up and they all just started to feel better. And morale was skyrocketing from a character that I presumed that wasn't really playing that pivotal of a role. But all of a sudden she's this, you know, heroine that comes out of nowhere. And then, you know, the NPC that's accompanying her in the scene looks very similar to the NPC that her father plays. And I'm like, there's no way. And then this cutscene happened. Master Xin Pi. Lady Xin Xian Yi. Is still alive? What the hell, man? So apparently Xin Pi has the ability to outlast and outlive Cao Cao, you know, who was probably around the same age as him when he first met him. And then he also outlasted Sao Pi, who is Sao Sao's son. So he not only outlasted the guy he met, who was probably his, you know, equal in age, he also outlasted the king's son, the new, you know, Sao Pi. So you're going to sit here and tell me that he lasted that long. And ironically, right after this scene, or maybe a battle or two after, um, you know, the father actually ends up dying. And that's how her story ends. Xin Xian Ying saw through Zhuge Liang's final taunt. 
Thanks to her advice, the Wei army won the Battle of Ujong Plains. After the battle, she returned to the capital with her father, Xin Pi. Although they had won the final battle against Chu, the darkness of the land still ran deep. Just as she was thinking that, her father, who had been by her side the entire time, died. It was yet another light lost to the bitter chaos of the times. Father, I've brought you the paperwork that you've requested. Father? No! Father! Father! <laughs> Don't lose your composure, Chen Yi. <sighs> I was in the middle of enjoying a much-needed nap, and that irritating habit of yours called me back to reality. <laughs> I am so glad, Father. But looking at what is really going on at the moment, the future of Wei and of our family is grim. And darling, when I start thinking of that, I just wish I could quietly slip away. I see. Sometimes even you have your moments of weakness. But you don't have to worry. No matter how deep the darkness gets, there is always going to be light. We just have to find it. To find the hope. And I leave that to you. Oh. Father? So that's the end of her story. I mean, that's pretty much it. There's not much else to analyze. I mean, she didn't do much for me to analyze. I mean, her weapon style was all right. Uh, I liked playing as it. I don't think it fits her as a character. I think a da smaller dagger or maybe like a the old weapon that Yue Ying used to use on her arm, that would have been fine for her. Uh, the axe is, I just don't think it's, I don't think it fits her. Anyway, her voice acting was fine. She didn't really have any other. She's, you know, she's, she wasn't even an NPC before. She's just... To me, she's a brand new character. I didn't even know who she was when I first saw her name. So, I mean, that's a lot, that's a lot of people with the Jin on the Jin Dynasty. But um, and, and she's also considered a Jin officer when the story didn't even revolve around Jin. She literally the story cut out before it even got to Jin. So that's misleading. And then voice acting was fine. Story was terrible. Just empty story. Didn't make any sense. Beginning, she was helping her father father disappears throughout the entire story and then she shows up at the end and she's a heroine and then he dies i'm like it just didn't make any sense the most interesting parts of her story was shaho yuan's death and guan yu's death anyway guys um Hope you enjoyed this video. She's ranked number 89th. Just because I'm going in order, I'm not really, you know, if she if I was actually ranking it, she would definitely be 90th. But because I'm just picking off new people, I'm just going through the first seven because they're all equal because I don't really know their characters yet. Um, she's technically 89th. But uh, if I redo it and Dice Wars 10 comes out, she's definitely going at the bottom because it was just awful playing as her. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would definitely appreciate a like, comment, or subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.